This is Mackenzie Sharilla. She is a 17 year old who was found guilty of murder for causing a car crash that killed her boyfriend and his friend. Mackenzie decided death was the ultimate goal that day. This was not reckless driving, this was murder. Sharilla's boyfriend, Dominic Russo, and his friend, Davian Flanagan, were in the car when she crashed into the side of a commercial building outside of Cleveland, going 100 miles per hour. Both men were pronounced dead at the scene, and Sharilla survived. Prosecutors argue that the teen had a toxic relationship, and Sharilla had made violent threats against her boyfriend. She threatened his property? Mm -hmm. She threatened yes. to break into his house? Correct. Reportedly, she crashed her car on purpose because she wanted to kill her boyfriend and that his friend was just collateral damage. The prosecutor said the intent was obvious upon seeing that video, that there was only one goal. You see her driving very calmly and making the right turn and then all evidence indicates she immediately put the pedal to the metal and drove straight into a building at 100 miles per hour. I think those really demonstrated to us that this was no accident. And a few days before the crash, she allegedly took the same route to plot the crime. This is where the judge now finds her guilty. Count one. Finds the defendant, Mackenzie Shirilla, guilty of murder to win Dominic Russo. She now stands up to be placed in handcuffs as she continues to tear up. Count two. Finds the defendant, Mackenzie Shirilla, guilty of murder to win Davion Flanagan. Shirilla now has a moment to speak before her sentencing. The family's There was no medical condition that caused this as an accident. There was no mechanical failure of the car. A failed suicide attempt is not a defense to murder. There's a very good likelihood, Mackenzie, that you will spend the rest of your life in prison. She's sentenced on count one, 15 years to life. Count two, 15 years to life to be served concurrent to each other. The judge just sentenced her to 15 years to life in prison. This is Aiden Fuji, who pled guilty in court for the murder of his classmate when he was only 14 years old. Well, having fun in a cop car. Yep. Fuji was classmates with a 13-year-old girl from Patriot Oaks Academy in St. Johns County, Florida. Fuji stabbed her 114 times. Her dead body was later recovered from the woods. After Fuji was arrested, he can be seen in the back of the cop car taking Snapchats. Now this video shows Fuji and his parents in the interrogation room. That Snapchat that you did, this number is smart. That it's all over, you're all over the internet and everywhere. This is serious. It's very serious. This is no joke. This is your whole life. Your whole life. And hers. And hers. A video from prosecutors showed Fuji and the girl allegedly walking together right before she was murdered. Then about 90 minutes later, the video shows Fuji allegedly running away from the area where the body was found. 114 stab wounds, 49 defensive wounds, 35 wounds to the head and neck, 29 to the back and shoulder, and 6 fatal wounds. After Fuji pled guilty to first degree murder, the judge now hands down his sentence. Having entered a plea of guilty to the crime of first degree murder, I sentence you to life in prison. Because of your age, you are eligible for a review of the sentence in 25 years. After Fuji was sentenced, he stood still with a little movement. This is Willard Miller and Jeremy Goodale, and at just 16 years old, they are both charged for the murder of their high school Spanish teacher. Reportedly, it was over a bad grade. We then moved her off of the trail where I then struck her and she died as a result. Miller and Goodale went to Fairfield High School in southeastern Iowa. Nohima Graber was the Spanish teacher at the school and Miller was one of her students. After he received a bad grade from Graber, he and his friend Goodale planned to kill her. Graber went for her usual walk at Chattawaka City Park. The boys knew that as they stalked her and they waited to ambush her. Here she comes and she walked by and hit her in the back of the head. And then I said, oh shit, make sure she's, she's dead. So we hit her a couple more times. They then dragged her into the woods and beat her to death with a baseball bat. What was the plan after that? There wasn't a plan beyond that. Like hide the body here, 
everybody, save the body. At that time, we were going to hide the body. I guess in our variants, we kind of assumed that nobody could ever find her. Not long after, both boys were arrested. Court documents allege that the witness who knew Goodale showed law enforcement Snapchat messages that showed Goodale and Miller's involvement in the murder. One of the Snapchat messages saying, point of view, you're my Spanish teacher and this is the last thing you see, followed by time to hide a body. Jeremy Goodale would later plead guilty and testify against his best friend Miller. I understood that he had the intent to kill Mrs. Graber. What is your plea to murder in the first degree, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. This is the moment that Goodale gets to speak before his sentence. I've had time to think on what to say, and I'm sorry, truly sorry. Every day I wish I could go back and stop myself. I can't comprehend losing a loved one in such an awful way. And now the judge hands down his sentence. The defendants shall be sentenced to life with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Now for Miller. This is him apologizing before he receives his sentence. I would like to take this opportunity to wholeheartedly accept responsibility for the role that I've played in the murder of a human raver. To the family, I'm sincerely sorry for the distress that I've caused you and the devastation. And I ask that I'm, I'm given a chance and I don't want to be institutionalized. I don't want to be in so long that I forget about what matter where I come from and I look forward to getting through this. And now the judge has some final last words. The defendant, Willard Noble Chaden Miller, should be sentenced to life with the possibility of parole after 35 years. Miller seems to be completely unfazed. This is Rachel Schoff and Sheila Eddy, who were both in court today for the murder of their friend when they were only 16 years old. Their scheme was to hide knives on their bodies and to attack Skylar at an agreed upon moment. In Star City, West Virginia, Schoff and Eddy were friends with 16-year-old Skylar Niece. Reportedly, Schoff and Eddy decided they didn't like Niece anymore, so they planned to kill her. Sheila Eddy and Rachel Schoff carried out that plan. Together, they stabbed and killed Skylar. After Schoff's confession, both teens were arrested. Schoff agreed to plead guilty to second-degree murder in exchange for her cooperation in the case. I'm so sorry. I don't know if there's a proper way to make this apology because there are not even words to describe the guilt and remorse that I feel each day for what I've done. I hurt the niece family and those who love Skylar. I hurt my parents and shamed my family. May God bring eternal peace to Skylar and the entire niece family. After securing a plea deal, the judge now gives Schof her sentence. Rachel Schof, it is the sentence of the court that you be imprisoned in the West Virginia State Penitentiary for a period of 30 years but she will have the possibility of parole in 10 years. And now for Eddie. It is the sentence of the court that you've been imprisoned in the West Virginia State Penitentiary for the rest of your natural life. That sentence is technically with mercy, which makes you eligible for parole after you have served 15 years. 